in this session we will learn the principle of virtual work sometimes student feel that this topic is little bit difficult from the first year engineering mechanics point of view but let me tell you this is an important tool used in many mechanics problem even it is also apply in the classical mechanics but for the first year engineering mechanics course the principle of virtual work topic is basically to give an understanding to the student that what is the this basic principle and in the whole uh, topic we are going to apply this principle of virtual work on very simple problem and i believe that once you will understand the basic philosophy of principle of virtual work it will not be difficult to apply this and to get the unknown values so without any delay i will start this topic so before i go and directly solve the problems let me explain you little bit in detail that what is this principle this principle is basically used to get the equation of deformation of structures under the static equilibrium for example there is a cantilevered beam and if i am applying a force f on the cantilevered beam the beam will have some deflection and that deflection is defined by certain value some del or some y value and you have to find the y value so how you can find the y value there are generally there are two approach one approach is basically you have to apply the newton's law where you are going to balance the forces and then you will find this deflection the another approach is based on the energy conservation and this principle of virtual work is basically uh, based on the energy formulation where instead of applying the force balance we apply some energy logic and then we find the uh, deflection case or the equation governing equation for this deflection for example in this cantilevered case the deflection is basically defined by a term e i y double dash is equal to minus m this is basically governing equation uh, i believe that in the first year engineering mechanics course you are not going to see this equation but for mechanical engineering students when you will study the solid mechanics you are definitely going to see this equation which de define the uh, deflection of beam so why i am explaining this so that you have an understanding that what is this principle all about so i am saying that this principle is basically based on the energy principle and let me explain this using this very simple problem suppose we are having a spring mass system where the mass is free to rotate in this horizontal channel but it cannot go upward or downward and suppose i am applying certain force f in this direction to my mass so what will happen as i will apply the force f the mass will move in the direction of force and it will acquire certain position suppose that initially the mass is at this line and then finally it reach to this position so this is the second position of my mass after the application of the force and now this would my spring so the deflection in the spring let's define by a term x in this case now if i will see my mass m now the system is in static equilibrium this is a system of static equilibrium and suppose i want to find a value of x let k is given to you and f is given to you and you have to find the value of x when you apply a force f to your system so what you can do you can apply both the method one method is based on the newton's principle another one is method of based on the energy principle so i am going to explain both the method so that you are going to have an idea that what is this principle of virtual work so let's if i want to apply the newton's law what i will do first i will make the free body diagram of my system where i am going to put all the forces suppose this is my force f as i know that now spring is strained now spring has some deflection that means there is a force at this point because of the spring and the magnitude of this force will be equal to kx if i will write the vertical forces i can write here that a downward force mg 
and an upward reaction R. However, I am interested in X. So what I will do when I will do the horizontal force balance and that will equal to zero because the system is in ecstatic equilibrium. I am come to I will come to know that F suppose this is my positive direction and this is my negative direction because I am dealing with the forces and forces are the vector quantity. It is very important to you put the forces along with their actual sign. So in my assumption suppose this is my positive force direction and this is my negative force direction. So F will be positive and Kx will be negative and the total force will be zero. When This is my basically the governing equation for my deflection. And from this equation I can get my deflection that will be F by K. So this method basically tells you the principle of Newton's law or the Newton's law approach where we deal with the forces and finally we get the unknown deflection in my structure. On the other end, if I want to apply the principle of virtual work, the principle of virtual work says that you should give a virtual displacement to your system. Now you should listen very carefully that you are giving a virtual displacement. Virtual displacement means that you are not actually displacing your system but you are assuming that your system is virtually displacing. When the system will virtually displace the next stage is to you write the work done from the forces acting on the system. For example here I am having force F I am having a force Kx, I am having one force in the vertical direction that is the downward force Mg and an upward force a normal reaction. Suppose I am, I am giving a virtual displacement to my system in the horizontal direction. I am not going to explain yet why I am giving you the deflection in the horizontal direction. Later on we are also going to see that the principle of virtual work have certain constraint but at this point to just understand a comparison between the Newton's law and the principle of virtual work let's give a virtual displacement to your system or your mass in rightward direction. Suppose this is the virtual displaced position. So initially the mass was here and now it has moved to this point and this is my virtual displacement let's define by a uh, value delta. This is my del. Now as I have given a virtual displacement del to my system I am able to write the work done by the different forces. So now there are four different forces. If I will writing the forces I can write that the Kx is one of the force and the force Kx displacement is the del and the deflection direction is the rightward. So my force will be basically F dot D if you will recall. So here the force and the deflection this will be my displacement value. Since the direction of the force and the direction of displacement is opposite definitely the cos theta will be 180 degree because when I will open the F dot D it will be FD cos theta and cos theta will be 180 so that will give a minus sign so I am putting a negative sign directly so that that can be simplified that actually I am applying a force in this direction and the displacement which I have assumed is towards the right direction so this force this work done will be negative so I am going to write the total virtual work done. One of the force will having this work done. Second force is F and the F is in rightward direction as well as I am giving the virtual displacement towards the right direction. So my second work will be positive F del. Now there are two more forces R and Mg but I know that the direction of the force and direction of the virtual displacement are perpendicular to each other. So when I am going to open the F dot D product definitely this F D cos 90 is going to give an energy zero value so I am not going to write the work done because of these two forces so finally this is my equation where I am having two forces and the two work done first work done because of the spring forces and the second work done because of the external force and as I know this is actually not there I am not actually displacing my system this is my virtual work done and ultimately I can going to give a zero value to my total work done because it is not actually there so this is the philosophy of the principle of virtual work and when you will solve this equation because basically you will take out the delta common and finally you will get that kx plus f is equal to zero and ultimately you are getting that x is equal to f by k. When you will see these two examples, obviously you will think that why we are to go into this, this kind of method, why don't we apply basically only the principle of Newton's law. What is the requirement of this principle of virtual work? 
तो लेट मी टेल यू दैट दिस इन फॉर दिस सिंपल एग्जांपल प्रोबेबली यू मे थिंक दैट द न्यूटन्स लॉ इज एक्यूरेट मोर एक्यूरेट मोर इजी अप्रोच देन व्हाई वी शुड गो फॉर द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ वर्चुअल वर्क बट फॉर एग्जांपल सपोज यू आर हैविंग अ प्रॉब्लम वेयर यू आर हैविंग अ सीजर काइंड ऑफ मैकेनिज्म एंड हियर आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ वर्चुअल वर्क एंड व्हाट इज द यूटिलिटी इन व्हिच काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम वी कैन अप्लाई दिस प्रिंसिपल ऑफ वर्चुअल वर्क सो लेट्स वी आर हैविंग अ सिस्टम वेयर देयर आर टू लिंक कनेक्टेड एट दिस पॉइंट फ्रॉम विद अ पिन जॉइंट दिस इज अ पिन जॉइंट दिस इज अगेन अ पिन जॉइंट दिस इज अ रोलर जॉइंट and because of this roller joint this end can move in upward and downward direction and as this it can move in the upward and direction di- up, downward direction the whole system may acquire a different configuration if i will try to push this system in this direction it may go with two straight line if i will try to push this system in this direction these two lines will come together and it will move it will looks like a single line in this direction so now if i am showing that the link are having masses m m so i am applying a 2 mg force and i am assuming that this joint is at the center of the two link so that net force is acting downward with the magnitude 2 mg at the same time i am applying a force f at this point and because of these two forces or the action of these two forces the system is acquiring a particular configuration suppose this theta is coming out 90 degree so now i am having a system where i know the magnitude of the mass of the two bar i know the angle and i am interested to find what would be the value of this force here if you are going to apply the newton's law what you are going to do you have to make the different free body diagrams one of the free body diagram will be the complete system where i am just removing the pin joint and the roller joint and instead of this pin and roller joint i am applying two reactions suppose this is r1 and r2 and this is r3 this is my pin joint here i am applying a force f after making the free body diagram i have to write the equation for horizontal force balance vertical force balance as well as the moment balance when i will solve all the three equation probably i have to go for the next free body diagram that may be the free body diagram of the single bar where i am also applying these two reaction as well as this force and this reaction and using the number of free body diagram ultimately i will reach to the unknown value which is my force f suppose the problem little bit more complicated and instead of having only the two members you are having multiple members and the same problem here you are applying a force here and there are number of joints and all the joints having different forces and you have to find certain value maybe the value of theta or maybe the value of force in that case your problem will become more complicated why because here you have to make number of free body diagrams and you have to start from this point and then you will move here and here and here and ultimately you will reach to the other point in that sense the newton's law becomes very cumbersome very lengthy however if i will apply the principle of virtual work which is based on the energy principle people you will see that this problem will become very easy however he at this point i am not solving this problem because first we have to understand what are the different rules or the step we have to follow to find the to get the uh, uh, principle of virtual work but let me tell you that this is problem very complicated when you are going to apply the newton's law of motion but it will be very simple problem when you will apply the principle of virtual work and we will see this in uh, our uh, when we will solve the problems so now let's formally start the principle of virtual work and how we can solve the uh, different cases so the first step of the principle of virtual work is that you have to give a virtual displacement to your system for example i have shown you already that when we are having a spring mass system i have given a virtual displacement to my mass so what should be the constraint for the virtual displacement virtual displacement should follow the system constraint you should understand what the what is the meaning of this word system constraint system constraint means that if there is a pin joint you cannot break the pin joint if there is a roller joint the roller can only slide in a channel if there is a vertical pendulum and the length of the pendulum is l you cannot move the pendulum in the upward or downward direction all these are the constraint and your virtual displacement should be consistent with your constraint and the second thing <coughs> is your virtual displacement will be along a free degree of freedom one degree of freedom here you should understand what do you mean by degree of freedom degree of freedom are basically 
इंडिपेंडेंट मोशन ऑफ अ सिस्टम एंड प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ वर्चुअल वर्क कैन ओनली बी अप्लाई If you are having a free degree of freedom in your system, if your system having zero degree of, uh, having uh, zero degree of freedom, you cannot apply the principle of virtual work. What I have said in last one minute, now I am going to explain with the different figures. So suppose you are having a system, as I have already shown you that the spring mass system. As I said that the virtual displacement should follow the system constraint. System constraint means in this case. If I am giving a virtual displacement to mass m, I can give only virtual displacement in the horizontal direction, maybe towards the rightward or the leftward. But I cannot give a virtual displacement towards the uh, upward or downward direction. Why? Because the system having a constraint that this mass can only slide in this channel. It cannot be go upward or downward. That means. my constraints are that that the virtual displacement would be in the horizontal direction ha huh. yeah however you can give a virtual displacement towards right or towards left you are free to give in any direction and the result will not be influenced by this kind of change in your uh, virtual displacement ha huh. yeah but you cannot give a virtual displacement in upward direction because system doesn't allow this mass to move in the upward direction similarly if you are having a pendulum and you are interested to find the tension in the pendulum using the principle of virtual work in this case you if you are going to make the free body diagram of your bob which is having which are, which are under the influence of two forces one is the gravitational force another force is the tension in the string and if you are giving a virtual displacement the only choice you are having of virtual displacement is in this direction because if you are going to give a virtual displacement in the upward direction you are going to supersede one law that says that the length of the wire will be l that means you cannot change the length of the wire similarly uh, let's understand this i am having three cases in one case i am having two links suppose this is a b c joint the joint c is a roller joint joint a is a pin joint and i want to give a virtual displacement to my system in this case the only freedom i am having here is the virtual displacement of joint c and that can go on the rightward direction or towards the leftward direction but let me tell you if i am giving a virtual displacement to point c automatically because the system is interconnected the link ab will have a rotation if i am giving a virtual displacement towards right the actual system will get a new configuration and this would be the new position in that way joint b is having a x displacement as well as a y displacement the link ab is having a rotation del theta or the theta and the joint c is having a displacement of xc in horizontal direction on the other end if i am giving a virtual displacement inside the system will have new configuration where these two links will look like in this way and the link is having a rotation in opposite direction roller is having a deflection in the opposite direction at the same time the joint b is having a deflection towards left as well as somehow somehow in the upward direction now let's see the second picture in the second picture i am showing the similar kind of figure but instead of having a roller joint here again i am having a pin joint now in this case is it possible to apply the virtual work and let me tell you you cannot apply the principle of virtual work in the second problem because the degree of freedom for this case is zero this is a locked structure you cannot move any of the link because when you will try to rotate this link you have to change the length of this link and that is not possible because all the links are rigid that means this kind of system is not feasible or you cannot apply the principle of virtual work until unless you are allowing any of the degree of freedom or any free degree of the freedom to your system then only you can apply the principle of virtual work but you should not worry this kind of problem is not going to come in your first year engineering mechanics virtual work course however you have to understand this kind of philosophy now i am showing the third picture here in this picture you can see that 